So Ian and Jared showed how graphical system design is being used to help engineers designing embedded systems to interchange simulated and real components to verify the functionality of their system under real world conditions. Now we want to talk about how that same platform is used to design, prototype, and deploy advanced embedded systems in areas like control and monitoring. Many of you are using our platform to do this in applications in energy, robotics, life sciences, and transportation. And you're doing it based on the RIO architecture, reconfigurable I.O. This architecture combines uh, processor, FPGA, and modular I.O. components to be the heart of an embedded system. Now, the FPGA is particularly critical. It combines hardware capability with software reprogrammability and allows you to embed um, IP and timing and synchronization very, very close to the I.O. of the system. We've been investing heavily in this architecture over the last decade or so, both in the LabVIEW capability to program these systems and in over 60 hardware products that now use it. We build on technology from partners such as Intel and Xilinx so that you can leverage Moore's Law and combine that with the productivity of LabVIEW. Now, we're very excited this morning to be adding an important new point on this Rio technology curve. And to help me introduce that point, I'd like to welcome up the general manager of the Embedded Computing Division of Intel, Michelle Tinsley, and National Instrument System Engineer, Dr. Ben Black. Okay, welcome, Michelle. Welcome to NI Week. Thank you. It's great to be here, Eric. Good. Good. So um, we've used and leveraged Intel processors for many years in desktops, laptops, and our own PXI products. Uh, tell us about the vision for Intel for the embedded market. Certainly. At Intel, we think that by the year 2015, there will be 15 billion connected devices. And the interesting thing is a small portion of these will actually be the laptops or cell phones that you're thinking of. Many of them will actually be connected embedded devices. And so we're looking at seeing um, devices like renewable energy, medical, and even industrial control systems playing into that connected vision. And how does Intel technology changing to accommodate that vision? Certainly at Intel we have an entire group that's focused on our embedded markets. Uh, what we do is we partner with the owning divisions at Intel to influence getting our features into these products. Anything from the low power Atom product line to the high performance core processors. And if we can't get what we need out of those products, we actually develop our own. And what we're seeing is a really great uptake in places like renewable energy where smart connected devices are required to help optimize the power grid as well as help integrate new power sources online um, to get the most out of the energy situation. Um, lastly, Intel's really committed to this market and what we've done is partnered with National Instruments for many years to really focus on driving high performance computing and embedded technologies into this market. And to that end, we're very excited this morning to be launching the first multi-core compact Rio system based on the Intel Core i7 processor. Now this adds, you can clap for that by the way. <laughs> cool. Now, now, this system adds a lot of horsepower for processing, app, uh, processing intensive applications that also need the ruggedness of a compact Rio system. Now, Ben, I know you've already had your hands on a couple of these, and you've been able to run some benchmarks for customers. Why don't you show the uh, performance improvement we've been seeing? Yeah, absolutely, Eric. I've been uh, working on a benchmark for one of our customers recently uh, who sent us a multi-input, multi-output control algorithm. I was running it on one of the original 400 megahertz compact Rios, and I got about 4.2 kilohertz loop rate. I ran the same control algorithm with the same I.O. on the new high-performance multi-core compact Rio, and in turbo mode, I was able to get nearly 50 kilohertz, over an 11x improvement in the loop rate. Nice. Cool. Now, Michelle, I'm confident that our users will find lots of new applications and uses for this extra horsepower. So on behalf of them, I'd like to say thank you to you and the team at Intel for enabling this capability. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. And we look forward to continuing to partner with National Instruments to bring the best of the computing power to Intel and continue to push that performance as well as increase um, lowering the power envelope so that scientists and engineers everywhere can continue to innovate. That's exciting. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.